encourage you this morning that despite all these uh, challenges that we have today we need to know that the Lord is still, still God. So let me just read Psalm 46. The Bible says God is our refuge and strength always ready to help in times of trouble. So we will not fear when earthquakes come and the mountains crumble into the sea let the oceans roar and foam let the mountains tremble as the water side. Today is a very difficult moment, but it is my prayer that the Lord will be our strength. He's here to strengthen us today. So just have that hope today, that even as we go through this journey, the strength of the Lord is here with us. So let me just pray with us, and the Lord will help us to pull through here. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we want to thank you this morning, O oh God, because of the strength and the peace that you've given us, O oh Lord. But in prayer and supplication, make your request known unto the Lord. And the peace that surpasses human understanding will guard your hearts in Christ Jesus. That is our portion this morning, O oh God, that we will have a hope more than what we are facing today over that jehovah god you will be the source of our strength this morning that you will be the source of our peace this morning oh god we know that it's quite heavy and jehovah god sometimes we look up to the mountains and forget that our help comes from you oh god father i pray that our help will come from you this morning oh god that we will look up to you oh lord and put our trust and our hope in you. Father, I commit each one of us today, even as we go to view the body, oh Lord, I pray for your strength. I pray for your peace. Every service that will be done today, that your glory will be seen in this, oh God. That people will be brought to you, oh God. That people will realize that you are the Lord of our lives. Father, we bless you and we honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. 
Father and our God, we continue to thank you, God. Thank you for the strength, thank you for the comfort, thank you for the peace. Father, we thank you because you are a good God. And uh, we want to commit ourselves to you, God. We shall guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. And so we commit everything to you, God, from here. We commit this day before your presence. We commit the day of tomorrow to you, O oh God. The Lord God, may you take control of everything. We are invite the Holy Spirit to be with us every time. So we want to thank you, Lord, for this. Be with us now and bless us, O oh God. We commit everything to you that you will lead us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.
that the Lord will guide us and will give us His peace. At this time, we invite Pastor Lubanga to spoke for us with our prayer. Also, the service of our sister Helen. And even as we gather, Lord, we submit to ourselves to you. The Father, you may lead us and guide us to this day. We know that we are having ahead of us the service, the worship, and everything that Lord you prepared for us. We pray that your presence may be with us, lead us, direct us, go ahead of us, and we shall follow after you. We bless you, Lord, for everything, because we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. What has it been? I uh, just want to welcome the worship team just to lead us in a few uh, songs as we celebrate together and uh, this time we will invite charity. God is here. Praise the Lord. God is good. And all the time. And that's His nature. And even in a time of sorrow like this, we are reminded that God is the one who gives life and He takes. And it, it breaks our hearts right now to be separated with the ones that we love. But I'd like us just to take for a moment, we stand up and praise the Lord for His goodness and His grace for giving heaven to us, who was a blessing to us.
God has given us peace, He has given us joy, and we have come to worship and to bless His name. Amen. A Baba of the One song just to worship and to bless the name of the Lord. Sister, to you, 
to share them. Rachel Ronald, Mary Matich, Caleb Moritini, Shazam Moritini, and Emmanuel Moritini. Family life. Helen got married to Wilson Colby in the 15th of January 1993. That is 27 years today. And we're blessed with four children, namely Sheila Chirono Colby, Stephanie Chebet Colby, Shalom Chabutai Colby, and Gideon Kikiri Matich Colby. She was daughter in law to the late Daudi, Daudi Taketa and the late Rebecca Taketa. Sister in law to Samuel, Edu, late uh, Josiah, Benjamin, late Isaac, Julius, Wesley, Shadrach, late Lena, Emily, Rose, Emma, Eunice, Deborah, Jacqueline, and Gideon. Nelson Shelley, Nelson Bruno, David Matic, Priscilla Matic, Medina, Betty Matic, and Caroline Matic. She was a cousin to Jane, Zaidi, Agnes, and Asokin, among others. She was also a niece to the good ones. Had a life in education. Helen attended Kiminda Primary School in Kapsabi from uh, ECD to Class 4, then only for one in RC where she completed her primary education. She proceeded to the Roman Secondary School where she completed her O level in the year 1990. She attended secretarial courses and successfully undertook her Kenya National Examination Council exams and thereafter proceeded to the Kenya School of Professional Studies for her diploma in secretarial studies and graduated in 1999. Work. Helen joined NHI in 1997 and was posted to the Dorit branch where she uh, was stationed for six months before being transferred to the head office in Nairobi. While in Nairobi, Helen worked in various departments at the same time rising through the ranks to the position of the executive secretary, a position which she held until March 2017 uh, when she opted for early retirement from the organization to dedicate herself to full-time music and church ministry. Community. Helen was involved in various community initiatives including working with the vulnerable members of the society such as support through paid school fees for orphans and the less fortunate. Support to widows and offer psychosocial services to men. She was the BOM chairperson of the Lumbuani Township Secondary School from the year 2012 to 2016 where through her able leadership, a lot of positive development, both physical and academic, was achieved. She, was, she also organized a support group for girls where they paid school fees and provided them with accommodation during school holidays. Charge Ministry. Helen held various positions in the church, including that of women leaders, leader at current AGC, AGC Nairobi region, and at national level, other department as a chef at the Church of Good Evangelism, Compassion, and Praise and Worship. Community Ministry, Gospel Ministry, sorry, Gospel Music Ministry. Helen began singing at an early age, where she's, uh, while still a member of Sunday school, in the year 2005, Helen launched her career as a gospel artist when she released her first album, Beach Lady. Thereafter, she released her second album, Tazam, in the year 2006. She subsequently released album on the changing and theater edited. Helen was working, was working on her last album, in Alambe Jesu. She was extensively involved in music and evangelism, traversing the country, majorly in the Rift Valley, including Moment, and Dorit, Guru, and Robi, that is currently Vera Kuminda, Transmaric in Guris, Elvio Maravit, and Mongala, more many other places. Her music career took her close borders, including travel to the US, more than one occasion. Rwanda and Uganda were where she ministered to various groups of preaching and music. Although, 
Helen was quite industrious and very resourceful person. As a speaker at various conferences, including but not limited to women, women conferences, youth, general conferences, and even men's meetings. She reached out to the entire spectrum of human race. In this respect, Helen began to author books to perpetuate her teaching in print. In print. Helen released her first book, Conquering and Forgiveness, <coughs> in the year 2015. She thereafter authored Healing from Your Past Hearts in 2017 and Overcoming Life Difficulties in 2019. Sickness. Helen enjoyed good health all her life until January 2020 when she felt unwell and was diagnosed with breast cancer. She began treatment thereafter and was strong and upbeat until October 2020 when her health deteriorated and required hospitalization, after which she improved and was discharged. Helen was again admitted to hospital on 23rd December 2020. She showed little improvement. Unfortunately, on 7th January 2020 at 5.30 p.m., Helen breathed her last while in, pre in the presence of close family members and members of the church led by Bishop AGC Kenya. Mama Helen, you fought a good fight. You have finished the race and you have kept the faith. We will dearly miss you. Rest in eternal peace. Amen. Thanks. Anderson, uh, that's what is cousin of uh, Helen Colligan. And uh, thank you for that. Uh, this time, we just want to hear the word of God. And I would like to uh, welcome Reverend Mesha Habib. Just to be Mesha Habib, uh, the pastor also of Picaro Church. If you come from Picaro, AGC has just begun at Picaro Church at Kazarani Junior Academy. You're very much welcome if you come from. The Bible says in the book of Acts chapter 9, beginning from verse 36. At Joba, there was a certain disciple named Tabith, which is translated means Dorcas. She was full of good works and acts of charity. And in those days she became ill and died. And when they had washed her, they laid her in their upper room. Since Lida was near Joba, the disciples hearing that Peter was there sent two men to him urging him, King, please come to us without delay. So Peter rose and went with them, and when he arrived, they took him to the upper room. And all the widows stood beside him weeping, and showing tiblings and other garments that Dorcas paid a while she was with him. But Peter put them all up to him, knelt down and prayed. And turning to the body, he said, Tabitha, arise. And she opened her eyes. And when she saw Peter, she sat up. And he gave her his hand and praised her, then calling the saints and widows, he presented her alive. And it became known throughout all Joba, and many believed in the Lord. And he stayed in Joba for many days with one Simon, the tongue. Let us pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we are here today to experience your comfort. We hear today to your children to listen to your word. I pray that you can speak to the depth of our hearts. And that, Lord, you can bring life again, even where there is death. Today, Lord, we pray for peace and abundance of your grace like never before. This, Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The story of Tabitha is commonly preached, especially where a committed woman in a church has rested. Yet today I want to bring to you or to our attention 
that despite most of us being alive in the flesh as we are here, we could also be dead. How can that be? If you came with an ambition or a passion or a dream that is no longer present, it is possible that you could be here, but you're walking dead. Godly passions that have been lost will be started again. Amen? And also godly dreams that are faded will be realized again today. Amen? And godly people that are saddened by the departure of our beloved wife, mom, friend will smile again. Amen? Who was Tabitha? The name Tabitha is derived from the character of an animal that many of us know, a gazelle. Now, the word Tabitha or Dorcas defines splendor or beauty. Among the Middle Eastern cultures, it was common to relate a very beautiful woman to the way a gazelle looks or the way a gazelle walks. Can I say? The beautiful. Can you say that with me? The beautiful. So the story of Tabitha is an example from scripture of a woman of honor. A woman of a flowing with beauty. And what Tabitha was on the outside, as you can see on that picture there and in your programs, she was even better on the inside. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, people marry for the beauty they see outside. But it is until you live with somebody that you get to know what beauty they have from their inside. Many times we are attracted to people on the outside. But today, as we commemorate the departure of our heroine, our sister Helen Colligan, I seek to remind you that God will move you to express the beauty and the glory that you possess, that you are supposed to possess from the inside. And you have, if you have lost it, I believe that she has given us the platform and the pedestal for you to restore the beauty of the glory of the Lord that you deserve to walk in. Amen? Amen. The title of this message, Tabitha, arise. Can you look to your neighbor? Tabitha, arise. <laughs> On the other side, Tabitha, arise. Arise that your beauty on the inside may outshine your booty on the outside. What are these evident characteristics that made Tabitha's character stand out? Number one, say it with me, Tabitha knew her God. Say that with me. Again, Tabitha knew her God. The Bible says in verse 36, at Joppa, there was a certain disciple named Tabitha, which is called Dorcas. And this woman was full of good works and charitable deeds, which she did. Now, in his book, Knowing God, a friend, Jim Parker, has written uh, about the four characteristics of Daniel, or a person who knows God. And he says, one can know so much about God, we can read the Bible, and you can actually be a theologian, you can be a professor of the Bible, but you actually do not know God. You only know about God, but you have not experienced God. And so he says that those who know God have great energy from God. Those who know God have great thoughts of God. And those who know God show great boldness for God. And those who know God have great contentment in God. Now that was heaven. Hallelujah. That was heaven. In her music, in her authorship, and evangelism outreach. It is this that compels Peter to command Tabitha, arise! in order to redisplay the characteristics of a true disciple. We needed an angel to stand up. And so Peter couldn't let that go. And he said, Tabitha, arise. Amen. Tabitha, her gift. Now, interesting. The Bible says she was full of charitable works and deeds. Verse 36. You get that? Now, James reminds the Christians of his time in James chapter 1, verse 17. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow of time. Where we get one of the verses of great is a faithfulness. Now she lived in the instructions of Titus 3:8. Now this is a faithful saying, and these things I want you to affirm constantly that those who are believed in God should be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable to men. 
that the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the benefit of all. Amen? Now, you see, when our gifts serve us, it leads to pride, self-exaltation, and divisiveness. You know why? Because we are celebrating a gift that is shared by all. Amen? Amen. Helen sang. Helen preached. Helen wrote. Helen gave. One time Helen walks into my house. Um, she's my shemeji. So this is family. And Helen walks into my house and she says, Pastor, something is wrong here. I said, what is it, my dear? The everything is okay. She said, no. Some cushions to go with the chairs. And she said, I am coming. I actually have seen some cushions that fit exactly this chair. And you know what? She leaves. And the next time Helen walks in, she has a set of cushions for my chairs. She saw a gap and she decided to feel. Those who do not know, when I first came to Nairobi, when ATC moved to Nairobi, and we were still looking for a place to stay, the person who hosted me and Pastor Wafula, Pastor Wafula called yesterday for the Kulina, to say, is this the lady who hosted us for all the time that we were in Nairobi before we got to our place? That is who Helen was. Because of years of faithfulness and service, Helen's service was led, has led to the planting of churches and even the transformation of lives. And that is why Peter cannot contain Tabitha to keep sleeping there. And he says, Tabitha, arise. Hallelujah. So, knew her God. Number two, Tabitha knew her gifts. And number three, Tabitha knew her group. Can you say that with me? Tabitha knew her group. Now, the Bible says that she served among the widows. I just had that thing read in the world. She served among the widows. In verse 39, the widows stood by Peter showing the works and the tuning that she made. And now, this is a very pathetic scene of poor widows deeply mourning the loss of their hero. And it is important to remind ourselves that there are many groups that we can choose to associate with. Many of us can choose to associate with the A1, the mighty. Sometimes we choose to associate with those who can pay us back in return. I do this and you do this for me. I come to your fundraising and you come to mine. I scratch your back and you scratch mine. That's how the world operates. But you could be here. What is your group? Is it the worship team? Is it the support group of the church, Sunday school teaching, pastoral, compassion, evangelism, education, supervisor, business helper, or maybe you're the wiper in the, in, the, in the office where you work, in the marketplace? And it is important for every one of us, before we take our last breath like our sister did, to identify the place and the purpose for which God has built you for and made you for. So that you can understand where God wants you to impact. Tabitha knew the power of Proverbs 19 verse 17. He who has pity of the poor lends the Lord. And now, that is what compels Peter to say, Tabitha, arise. Tabitha was paid back for the second opportunity to live again. Why? So that the ministry of the Lord can continue. And you could be here. You could be here. But there's something interesting about Tabitha. Again, let's go back. Number one, Tabitha knew her God. Number two, Tabitha knew her gifts. Number three, Tabitha knew her group. Now, something interesting. Tabitha knew her guardians. Can you say that with me? Tabitha knew her guardians. He put them all out. Then what did he do? And he knelt down and he prayed. And he turned to the body and he said, now, Peter is alone. He has put everybody else outside. And he starts the resurrection of and says, Tabitha, arise. Now, the Bible says, Tabitha, I could go on out of drama. The Bible says, that Tabitha sat up. Then, did you notice the next sentence? The Bible says, and when she saw Peter. Ah. Did you see that? And when she saw Peter, she sat up. Now, I wonder, when she saw Peter, she sat up. Never disregard the place of authentic spiritual mentors and guardians in your life. The Bible recognizes that when she saw Peter, she sat up. 
Peter seems to have given her confidence. Peter was the image of Christ's manifestation because of the works that were associated with his name. He had just been doing a series of miracles and God was using him from the time that he had preached to the crowd when the Spirit of the Lord had come down. How often we need dependable servants of God that we can look up to. And their presence gives us confidence and assurance. They encourage, they build our faith no matter the circumstances. Now, the morning before Helen departed to glory, God put in our hearts to go and visit with her that morning. And so God compelled me to visit. And so we went. I also shared with my colleagues at the office, including our bishop. They also came. Little had we gone back. We were just sitting. In fact, we were having a chat with the bishop. When my sister-in-law, Eunice, calls me and tells me, we need you here, right now. And I could hear from her tone that something was not right. And so we, we left what we were doing in the middle of the way and we all rushed together and a number of us from the church. When I held the hands of mom, I felt the warmth. She never wanted to let me hands. Since COVID, she was the first person outside that was holding hands with me for the first time. And I could feel the warmth and the joy. And as when I want to let her hands go, it's like she does not want to let my, my hands go. She's like, let's just hang here. Let's just stay here. But later on, she was even in better hands. When they were together with our brother, Mr. Colgi, and our bishop, Reverend Dr. Lennart, just holding her, even those last minutes, as she was breathing, Don't be the member who caused the pastor to marry and bury you. And I can tell you for free, there are places we are called, you don't even know the name of the pastor, but you go there because of love. And I want to challenge you that if Helen has brought you into this service today, and you have never been to church before, or you only come when people are married or buried, I want to remind you again, can you engage and lift up your spiritual level? You need to have a spiritual authority in your life who can speak to you during good times and during hard times. You need men and women of God who can stand and cry together with you, even in the last of the moments. You need people that you can look and say, I am confident in their presence, and you can sit in peace. Number two, Tabitha, number three, Tabitha, New number four. Tabitha, new Hagaris. And number five. Tabitha, she, God's glory. Tabitha, she, God's glory. How did she show God's glory? With Peter, she knew God had manifested himself. And maybe she had had Peter was around in the neighboring town. Maybe she had been praying for God to send a servant to heal her of her disease. But just like Jesus, in the time of Lazarus, maybe Peter came a bit too late, and therefore the sister had to pass on time. Amen? Amen? Though God may seem late, he comes on time. So when she sat, she saw Peter, she sat up. She had literally been called back from paradise to fulfill her purpose. She had experienced the glory on the other side. And because of her, I love the finish in verse 42. The Bible says in verse 42, and it became known throughout all Joppa. Hey, it became known through all Joppa, and many people believed in the Lord when they heard of what had happened to Tabitha. Hallelujah! Amen. Hallelujah! Amen. The resurrection of Tabitha was not just because of the widow's crying, the resurrection of Tabitha was because she was an investment in the kingdom of God. And we had a resurrection, there came multiple souls to the kingdom of God. Amen. Tabitha, arise. Now what am I trying to say here? Tabitha is not like Hezekiah. Hezekiah asked for 15 more years. But do you know what happened? Yes, he was given. But then what happened to Israel? It was because of Hezekiah's uh, resurrection coming back that Israel went to captivity. Because yeah. instead of glorifying God, pride entered him. So he brought Babylonians and started showing them the treasures of the house of God. And when the Babylonians saw and they went back, they started planning how to come back and do the looting. You wish Hezekiah never resurrected again. The 15 years of Hezekiah were a torment to 
the children of Israel. Maybe some of us here that you can change your attitude oh, yeah. in your life. And therefore, in this resurrection service this morning, the Lord wants to bring to life the spirit man in you. The Bible says in Romans 8:10, if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. Good works without faith is not sufficient to secure your place in the kingdom of God. I don't care whether you come to church, whether you sing in the worship team. What I care is, do you have a personal relationship with Jehovah? And if Helen, who was a non nonsense preacher, came here, should be asking, do, are you saved? That's the first question you ask each of you. Because in this resurrection service, we would rather have souls being brought back to the Lord than to are dead. Tabitha, arise and experience your God. So today as I look at this congregation and members being prepared by God for the destiny, members who change the history of ministry in their churches, homes, workplaces, and in Kenya and beyond. If you are here, members who the church and the world is experiencing or waiting to experience. I say this when a pastor was mentored and served many young people have seen. I, I once buried a young man in a similar coffin, white. Yeah, actually, he was also dressed in white. But embarrassingly, he had been shot because he was a thief. And then he would rise again in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. I declare that godly passions that have been lost to be stuck up again in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen? And I declare that godly dreams that are no more should be realized again in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. And I declare that if you are a sinner and you do not know Jesus, the only way you can come to life is by today as we pray, lift up your hands and say that I want to be where she is now. I want to receive the Lord Jesus in my life. Hallelujah. Tabitha, arise. Wash it.
Helen knew her group and she impacted our lives. So we choose to celebrate the 49 years that you allowed us to interact with Helen on this side of heaven. And Father, we are mourning as human beings, but we are mourning knowing that the resurrection morning we will see Helen in a new body. We are still and we acknowledge that you are God. In Jesus' name we thank you. The Lord, we continue to pray. You promised us in the book of John chapter 4, you are going to send our comforter and our counselor. And we continue to pray that you grant us peace, not as the world gives us the peace that comes from you. There will be moments, Lord, that we are low, moments of discouragement. But we pray that in those moments you will lift us up. You will hold us. As David said, you lifted me out of the mighty clay and set me upon the rock. And Lord, we pray for Wilson, we pray for Sheila, we pray for Stephanie, we pray for Gideon, we pray for her sisters, we pray for her brothers, all the relatives, that Lord, may your presence walk with them. Lord, may your hand rest upon their soul in the name of Jesus. May your hand rest upon their lives in the name of Jesus. And we pray, Lord, even as they be traveled to your today, even as we prepare for the final service tomorrow, we pray for your presence. We continue to pray. May your presence be with the family. In Jesus' name. Someone was made this prayer with us. Number two, Tabitha knew her gifts. And number three, Tabitha knew her group. And number four, Tabitha knew her gadgets. And number five, Tabitha showed God's glory. May your work bring glory to the Almighty. May God bless you. Let's get to the Lord. Lord, thank God so much for speaking to our hearts and it's my prayer that we will rise. I will not go into another session of our speeches and it will be very short. But before I sit, I invite my brother, Michael Amat. Um, we just want to do one song that Helen did.
Reverend Meshach, that was a wonderful and befitting message for this occasion. Um, I think it has come to us um, true to the word and true to what our sister believed in. And um, I liked the, the gifts that we have brought it very well. At, in this case, I want to replace the Tabitha with Helen so that Helen knew her God and Helen knew her gift very well and she used it very well. And also she knew our group. Uh, so um, this time we want to, because um, we have some few friends who may not be traveling with us uh, tomorrow, we want also to allow them an opportunity to say a word of encouragement with the family and uh, to condole with them. So we are going to take a very uh, short time in this session um, because we want to allow the family time to travel safe. So um, let me just recognize the different groupings that are here so that we, uh, when we give a chance the few friends who are going to speak and also the family who are going to speak to us, let us know that we have recognized you, we know and we uh, accept your presence here today. So first, let me start with the church. I will just request the few, the names I'll mention, so you just stand and we'll allow individuals who represent you. Uh, beginning with the church where the colleagues have been worshipping or are still worshipping, that is current AGC. All the members of current AGC, let me just request you to stand where you are seated. The Nairobi Region Church, when I say Nairobi Region, means all the other AGC churches in Nairobi. Please also you can stand. Yes, thank you so much. Asante Sana Kwakuja. Now all the other churches outside Nairobi, any church or AGC churches that are outside Nairobi region, please also you can stand. Asante Sana for those who have come. Um, let me see if there is a delegation from uh, NHIF where Alan was walking before. Any delegation from NHIF? Yes, yes, good number. We will give you a chance. One representative from you will speak. KCB Group, Kenya Commercial Bank. Please also let me request you to stand. KCB is a group. Yes, Sanchez Sana also will allow you a chance to speak. The musicians, I know they were here briefly. All the musicians who are in the house, please also stand. Shukran Sana. On behalf of current AGC, on behalf of AGC Kenya, the Sawal, and on behalf of the region, um, let me invite Reverend Ray to say a word. Reverend Ray also was the chair, or still is the chair, of the committee that has been planning uh, for this uh, service and now all the way up to home. So, Makofi Kwa, Reverend Ray. Praise the Lord. Um, we want to give, thank God for the opportunity given us to be here this morning. Uh, secondly, to thank God for the healing, the peace that He's given us even in this season as we continue to mourn and grieve over the loss of the departure of our, our sister, our mother, our friend. And the, as, as Reverend Meshach was sharing the word this morning. I just remember the words of Paul. For me to die is gain, but to live is Christ. Where she has gone is a better place. But also for us to be here is because of Jesus Christ. And so that gives us hope knowing that, yes, we are still alive today, but we are on a journey. The words that have been written on the book says, I have fought a good fight, I have kept the faith. And I think it should be an encouragement to us as members of the church. On behalf of Karen AGC, Pastor Jeff is a pastor now uh, there. On um, behalf of Karen AGC, where I served for eight years, um, we, we worked together with the family. Let me bring our body, our condolences. And I would say the first time I saw Helen was not in Karen. I think there was a women conference in Kericho, Emmanuel, just before I came. 
and I think there are men who are not yet married. And she, the Amma was preaching to women who are married. If I am not wrong. <laughs> that was the first time I saw her. And I was told, you know, when you go to Nairobi, that is the women's leader. And I really did not know them. And, and so my first experience with Helen and I think Dama was in uh, a church. And they were preaching to ladies, about 400 that were in Manuel AGC. And so on behalf of the church, we want to say Poland. We want to bring our condolences. Uh, the second thing is, uh, as you've heard, a lot of things that Helen did for the church. And one day, I am um, in the office, and Helen comes in uh, with a pickup, and there was a tent in it, and she says, I am bringing this tent. And I said to Helen, okay, good. We will keep it here so that when people rent, we can give the money to you. She said, no, 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 it's for the church. So for a whole month, I was confused whether the tent was given to us temporarily or permanently, because she just said, here's a tent. So it took a while for me to get what she, she meant. And that's what we would say about Helen, that she would do things without telling you much, but she gave her best, and she gave all. The other thing I remember about Helen is whenever you are in church, I would sit in the front. I would know Helen is in the church. You can tell when she is there, because you know, you know Helen when she is around. She's loving, she prays a lot, she sings with all her heart. And, and you know, that is something that we will miss even as a body of Jesus Christ. So the family, we truly will miss um, what Helen did. And the personal things that she did for us as pastors, for the church, we truly will miss. But what I am happy about, she is in heaven. And as Paul said, I beat my body, I discipline myself, so that when I have preached, I will not be disqualified. Oh, with all confidence, we know where she is. Now I have to work extra hard so that I will be able to see her. So that when I have preached, I will not be disqualified on this journey. On behalf of Nairobi region, again, where she served as the first women's leader, not many people know that. When we started the region, um, uh, the regional uh, structure in our church, Helen was the first women leader. I think they were the first group that attended CCC as ladies. You know, ADC for a long time, because of how we elected our leaders, most people who were elected were men. And there used to be, I think, one lady who just attended CCC, that's the women's leader. But when the regional structure came, nine ladies, nine women were requested to join the Central Church Council. And she was one of them. And so, as you can see, that her service even reached beyond um, Nairobi to the entire CCC. Thirdly, on behalf of the of ADC, our bishop, our assistant bishop, all the members of the African Gospel Church, I want to bring some message of condolences. Not only did she touch current ADC in Nairobi region, but also the entire church. Many times I would ask her to preach, but I remember one day I asked Helen, okay, come and preach about holiness. Halfway through the message change from holiness to evangelism. Because she loved it, and that's what she did all the time. How she loved evangelism, how she loved to preach people to come to Jesus Christ. And as a church, we felt a gift, we felt a service across the denomination, from Chevano, from Nara, from Kericho, everywhere, Helen loved to serve. And we did not feel bad wherever we didn't see Helen for like two months, because we knew she somewhere preaching. A fully, I think it is Paul or Peter who writes and said, be spent, spend and be spent. There's a scripture that says that. When I was leaving teacher's college, one of my teachers wrote to me as a scripture and says, be spent and be spent. As Christians that are here today, not only should we give, but also everything who we are should be poured out. The word of Max Monroe says, and I think when he was in Nairobi, he said, I want to die when I am empty because I have spent my resources and I myself have been spent. And so I think as we sit here today, we have no doubt that she did spend her resources, but also she poured out what God had put in her heart. She knew her gift, one as a few. Proverbs says, your gift will open doors for you. And I can tell you, as you will hear the things that she did, using her gift to open the door for her, and she did meet great people, she did preach the word. And my encouragement to all of us that are here today, and the family, Sheila, Stephanie, Gideon, 
um, sh uh, Shalom and, and, and Mr. Cole again is that you cannot be helped, but there's something God has put in your heart. If you spend it, God will lift you up. We we'll reach out and we'll be true examples and we will be ministers of God's word. So may the Lord bless you on behalf of the church to the same Apollo. Mungu au moja nani, you are assured that the church is truly praying for you. And as he comes, I want to say thank you on behalf of the committee for the overwhelming love. Oh, you have no idea how much love men and women across the church, men and women across all divides, some of them we don't know their names. They did send 10 shillings, they gave us a lot. You showed us love, you showed this family love. May the Lord bless you. I don't know whether they are watching us on Facebook or any other media. We are saying we are truly, truly grateful for the overwhelming love that you showed us. Mungu, our bariki. May he bless the works of your hand. And may you see the Lord in the land of the living. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much. As just a request from the family um, to allow only one person to represent all the other churches. I'm Pastor Anne Dirango from Holiness Revival Ministry. I knew Helen because she came to the conference at the Holiness Revival Ministry. Helen has finished the race. She has fought the good fight of faith. And she has won the race. She has finished the race in faith. It's a good fight. It's not a physical fight. When we are in our flesh, the flesh wars against the spirit. When we are on this earth, we should fight the good fight of faith. We should fight the flesh because this flesh, as you can see, is going to go back to dust from dust to dust but the lord says it's appointed for man to die once and after that is your judgment in the book of ecclesiastes it says the conclusion of the whole matter is fear god keep his commandments for this is the whole duty of man for God shall bring every work every work into judgment and that is why we have to be very careful we are told you are saved we all profess I am saved second Corinthians chapter 7 verse 1 it says dearly beloved with all these promises, cleanse yourself from all filthiness of the flesh. This flesh, we can, this flesh is a temple of the Holy Spirit. This body wars against your flesh. It's a battle for heaven. There's a battle raging from the day that the midwife or the gynecologist announced, well, you have gotten a baby girl. You have gotten a baby boy. That is the time the battle lines were drawn. Are you going to listen to Satan? You say no to Satan today. She stood for righteousness. She stood for holiness. She has fought her fight of good, a good fight. What is that fight she fought? She fought the fight of faith. So it is up to you call yourself before God, to bring yourself before the holy presence of a holy God. He is not going to listen to you. You cannot rationalize the word of God. You're fearfully and wonderfully made. And that is your God. This is the one that will judge you. He is God and he is not. He does not compromise. He does not compromise on his holiness. And you have to make up your mind. It's vanity. Of Ecclesiastes, Solomon said, wealth is vanity. It all ends at the point of death. Where are you going? Where are you going? Where are you going to go when you die? 
That is the word I live with you. Because God matters. God cares. God matters in your life. God is supreme. And he cannot, he cannot be mocked. God is not mocked. Let us lay down all our crowns of life. Our titles. Let us lay them down at his feet. And pick up the cross. And follow the Lord. For he is a just God. He is a holy God. Mom has gone to be with the Lord. She did her work. She feared God. She led a life where she feared God. And she's gone to be with her maker. And her creator is with her. We have that hope. We are people of hope that she has gone to rest. So we will rest. She has left us the button. So we will pick the button and run the good race, the race of faith. We will not let down. We will not drop the ball. We will not drop the button. We will carry on. For the peace of God will reign in your life. To ask her friends and her colleagues in the work of God, we will say we will be left in peace. We will have the peace that Christ will give unto us. But we will run the race. We will even run the race faster than we have been doing. Because the, the rapture is imminent. The rapture will soon take place. How many of us are going to make it to heaven? Thank you. Thank you so much. Let me invite on behalf of all the musicians where um, Helen has been a musician and a good one. We have sung her songs. And I know um, there are two people that began with Helen the ministry when they began singing. I think it was Jeff and Josephine. Those are the ones who began. I know there are several others who are here. I've seen Wiki, I've seen uh, Josh. So Josephine, maybe you can say a word. Praise the Lord again. Um, I'm Josephine Wiki. I'm from Kenya. I'm from knowing that my friend is gone. But what I know is that she has gone to be with the Lord. When as if you will. You know, there are people when they go, when we are burying them, you doubt. You you asking yourself, but this one, when as if you will. Helen, I can say without a doubt that she is with the Lord. Why am I saying this? I am one of those people who knew Helen. We knew each other, Kabisa, with Helen. As I said uh, the other day when we had a family study in Karen ADC, that I met Helen way back in two, the year 2000. And as families, we've seen our children grow. I remember when I had my second born at Mbisha in 2003. Helen was the first one to come and visit me in hospital. And Helen was very funny at times. So the day she came to visit me, I'm just saying this as uh, something that will make you know that we knew each other with Helen. She came and peeped through the window and then she told me, I'm Katrina Yumbani. So I looked around, you know, like you just had a baby, you are just a day after having a baby. I looked around and I was like, who is this? And then she smiled, she told me, I am a sheep and a jam sana, nige fika apata, nige kuja jana usiku. But Helen was a friend. I said, we wrote music with Helen. She encouraged me. We prayed with Helen. And we prayed for literally everything with Helen. I could go to, with, to Helen uh, and tell her, Helen, I'm going through this and this. And before even I finish the statement, she tells me, let us pray. And we prayed, and I saw God. And Helen kept on quoting that scripture that is behind the uh, the the theology. She kept on telling me that. And I want to thank God this morning for the life of Helen. She taught me so many things. I remember there's a time she taught me how to cook a delicacy. And she told me she was taught by a lady from, I think, Philippines. She, she was called Isla. And she taught me how to cook. And every time people ask me, how, how can you know how to cook this and this? And I tell them I was taught by my friend Helen. So Helen told me literally everything. Let me talk about the ministry. We 
when the evangelized with Helen, we went to Baringo, Bomet, Kilamani. And one funny thing with Helen, she was like a politician. Akiona watu wa mekusanyika maali hivi. She tells me, Josephine, tusimame hapa tukubiri. Doi crowd. And we could stand. We, we could preach. I remember there's a time we preached, I think it was in 2013. We preached in Bomet, up on stage. For those who know Bomet, uh, we preached without a microphone. You know what we used to do? Mr. Colleague, I remember the Noah that we used to. Thank you for the Noah that you gave us. We used to go around with it. Tunaweka cassette kwa gari, iyo Noah. Alafu, in a chesa window, it plays my song, Ellen's song, Jeff's song, or Jolie's song. Tunaweka in a imba, and then people come. You see, you can imagine that people come. And then we could preach. And then this day, Helen, I think she had a soul fruit. She told me, where are you going to be? But yes, I would go on. Preach. So I preached in one stage without a microphone. And people came to Christ. We went to one another time and, and we preached to a drunkard. And people were saying, who you are as here? So we preached to this drunkard and then he was falling down. And I look up on my top and I talk. So we literally and we are telling him in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. That is the work we used to do with Helen. And I'm so much encouraged, and even though I'm crying, even though I have a heavy heart this uh, day, I know my friend is with the Lord. Amen. And when uh, Helen went to be with the Lord on Thursday, I, I looked at my life. You know, I was crying and I looked at my life and I, I asked myself, where am I? If I was the one to go right now, where will I go? And I remember something that Helen told me in an HIF office another time. She told me in Swahili, Josephine, to be Baka ata wakati ambako tutakuwa tumeenda, maisha yetu ya takuwa ya naubiria watu. Can you imagine that? Even though Helen is gone, our life is still preaching to people. One has to feel it. Aluma Josephine, tukuna tumalize, kesho mungu watalete ingini. Can you imagine? She had such big faith. Sadina na mwini tukona shilingi kapi na mwambia ni kona miyambili. Tukula tumalize. Kesho mungu wakalete kukita. Wana sifiwe. That is the match we shared with Helen. And Wilson, Sheila, Stephanie, Shalom and Lillian. God will encourage you. He is with you. Wana sifiwe. Asante sana. Mungu awabariki. My name is Josephine Mwana. Oh, that is uh, befitting. Uh, thank you so much. And uh, I think only what's there, I'm not saying also, is we started that ministry. Before they went out of the ministry, we had a church planting mission that we used to do. And we used to take them. That is how they began their ministry going out. Where's Kogat? Can you start? Mr. Kogat is my team. Firstly. Yes, yes. Okay, um, Mr. John Mutai, kindly representing JCB. Good morning. I thank God for this great opportunity to come and say bye to our sister Helen. I've known Helen for a, a long time. Uh, when, we, when I came to Nairobi, I was staying the first time in Zimmerman. And we were attending the deliverance church in Sarani. And we used to sing together in the choir of the church. So I knew Helen as a singer, but uh, at that time she had not started the, the recording of songs. So later on I came to know really she had another talent of uh, recording songs and praising the name of the Lord. Today we really appreciate the good works that the Lord has done through our sister. And uh, today we can really appreciate what the Word of God says in Isaiah 32, verse 17, that uh, the, the, the fruit of righteousness is peace, and the effects of righteousness is quietness and confidence forevermore. I thank God because today we stand with the confidence knowing that our sister has gone to a good place to be with the Lord, and we appreciate the the, the work she has done with uh, for the Lord, Helen really worked uh, the, 
served us. We, she came to our fellowship in KCB. We have a fellowship. I, I, I work in the head office up a hill here. And Helen, we, we normally have a, a, a medication once in a month before this COVID-19 things came in. So we used to have a, every month an, a, a fellowship in the evening. And Helen came, even over lunch hour, she could come. At that time, we could even invite a, a, a preacher. And uh, if we realize the preacher is not coming, and uh, we just call Helen, she just dashes in and comes in. And she stands, and uh, we have gone also with her to other missions. I remember we went for a mission to our home in Bomet. And uh, I, I fellowship with the Nicholas Church uh, in, in Bomet, Darawit. That is the, 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 in, the, in, the, in that book, she was born in the Darawit. That is our home. We went there and uh, we preached over the weekend. And after we finished the service and we came back on Monday, Helen went back to that church again on the next Sunday. She went back also the other Sunday. She loved our church. <laughs> Praise the Lord. She did a great job. We thank God. Helen, stay with the Lord. We thank God for what the Lord has done through you. Thank you, the family of Kolege. We thank God because we believe the Lord is going to lift you and stand with you even in this journey. Uh, I know I know you. We have worked with Kolege uh, Wilson in KCB and uh, I've seen the children, we have, we, have, we have met together even in prayer, in, in, in places, in, in, uh, even in the Brother Gay's place, we thank God. May God lift you and stand with you in this journey. Mm -hmm. And for the, my friends in KCB, I, I believe you are here, maybe they can stand, so that at least we can appreciate them. Yeah, give up your talk. Well, God bless you so much, thank you for coming. Uh, or something? Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, we really appreciate it. And we, we pray that God is going to stand with this family even in this time. Thank you so much and thank you so much. God bless you. Asante sana kwa time. I hope you are coming time. Thank you for those encouraging words. NHIF. My name is Grace Kimeli. I am from HR department and staff welfare. This morning, this afternoon, on behalf of my colleagues, NHIF, our management. So I want to request uh, all those from NHIF, the current staff in NHIF who have uh, managed to come here, and also those who left NHIF on those VSR and VSR. Please arise so that we can give our sister our tribute. Thank you, colleagues. You sit down. I take this opportunity to give my Condolence on behalf of my colleagues at NHIF and personal condolence to the Kulige family. Shalom and Stephanie, and of course the young man, Kidion. We really celebrated Kidion's birth because Helen was still in NHIF. We bring our condolence and at the same time, celebrate the life of Ellen. Praise the Lord. We celebrate her life because she has lived and served the Lord. She was also a very dedicated uh, mom because we came to know all her family. And uh, even her life in marriage was an example as well. And so we really want to appreciate and pray for the family that God will hold you. Helen was, she worked uh, for the time I was in NHI with her. She worked in HR at some point. And the last place she worked was uh, in ICT. And I'm sure that most of the colleagues who are here are from ICT. And then Helen left uh, NHI when we had a uh, 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 volunteer service initiative, which was also volunteer early retirement. And now we understand why Helen picked that opportunity. And because what she has done after she left the NHIF is what is even blessing us today. We want to appreciate Helen 
for the resource she was. A resource in the sense that as she lives today, or as she has slept and with the Lord, she did things that we will live to remember her. Through her music, praise the Lord, she ministers. Through the three books that she wrote, we will remember Helen as we read her books. And the other day I encouraged the family that please help us. Let those books come, their edition, let her music also come. Because it is really a ministering to people. And I love the fact that Helen was so much compassionate about life. She was also com compassionate about service to people. She was very compassionate in ensuring that we also come to know the Lord and live a, a successful life here on earth. Praise God. And so ours is really to wish the family, especially the daughters who actually look like Helen, please may the Lord strengthen you. I know the foundation that your mom has laid is enough to propel you in the remaining part of life. And as for Kidion, I know Kidion was close to the mother being the last one, of course. And the other thing is uh, I have interacted with this family on 28th of December 2019. I didn't know that was the last time we would be with Helen. And I love the spirit that existed between Helen and Wilson, her husband. It really built me because when, when we had a small problem with our car, the whole, they all came and they sat there with us and showed that they helped us until we left. And even when we reached where we were traveling, they ensured, they called to ensure that we reached safely. May God bless you and keep you at this time. It's not an easy time. Losing a spouse is not easy and for that matter, the lady of the home, but the Lord knows everything. So may God bless you so much and ask for many child will stand with you. I know a number will be coming home tomorrow and even after we will still visit because these friends from NHIF they gave us something to present the other day and they still they are still giving so we will come home as a team may God bless you before I sit give me one minute to allow uh, sister Pauline who were actually with uh, Helen and they are among the team that left NHIF in 2017 so uh, please allow one minute for Pauline to say something and from us may the Lord bless you God is good and all the time. My name is Apolline Burgat. I stand here to condole Helen. Helen was special to me, not just as a friend, as my colleague Grace has said. Helen was a gem. I worked with her in NHIF, and when we left in 2017, we continued meeting. Helen is a very close friend to my cousin, Damaris Lelit, and I met her in 2019 in our home. So Helen has been like our sister to us, and we love her dearly. I read her books a lot. She encourages me. And when you read her books, you just realize that she's actually talking about what is happening today. I thank God that Helen left NHIF to serve the Lord. I opted to leave at 55, and I asked him, Mr. Bamore, why aren't you staying with us? He said, Holy, I want to retire when I have energy to serve the Lord. Praise God. So Helen left NHIF when she had energy to serve God. I thank God so much for the gift of her life. I will continue serving God the way Helen did. She set a wonderful example. I want to say, Paul, to the Holy Ghost, Mutya Misi, and Lago Dab Helen. Mutya Ex and 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 I left NHIF to serve in my home county government of Egeo Marquette. I'm a commissioner there, and I also serve in Mary University Council as a member. Thank you so much, Sandy uh, Sana, for all the team from NHIF. And now, to close on behalf of all the friends, let me invite the Secretary General of NAT, Mr. Wilson Sosian. Praise the Lord. Yes, to my brother, the comrade. Uh, Wilson Kolege and the children and all of us, friends of Helen who worked in the ministry, particularly of uh, evangelism through music and everyone else. I take this opportunity on my own behalf, that of my family, to convey my condolence to 
my brother, Wilson Kulige. For those who don't know, we are very, very, very close. The true sense of the African word is my brother. Others we say cousin from the same clan. And uh, of course, all of us have eulogized the life of Helen. We have said all the good things, all the adjectives. We know her story. But from the family circles and the rest of the secular circle, I think we can describe Helen as someone very, very courageous with a strong conviction and a very committed Christian. Very courageous with a very strong conviction. Knowing her from a humble beginning, of course I've spent a lot of time with Wilson, I taught with him, I taught in the same schools as young men when we were training before we graduated and I saw Helen get into our family and grow in our family as, uh, in terms of career and every aspect and in the mobility of life to higher levels of influence I think she's a rare type very rare type and uh, the work that she did of course from her colleagues work with her I like the word that she said let us do things that will continue working and influencing even when we are not there. And I think the courage to rise through music and to communicate through music, her music will live on for them. It will be here with us, preaching to us and influencing us. Uh, listening to that Noah of uh, where you could stand on the roadside and uh, attract crowds and preach. But these are signs of courage. Very few people are courageous to speak the truth and do things in the right way. And uh, I will summarize and say, uh, Helen was the greatest teacher who ever lived. Don't think teachers are those who are trained in teacher training volunteers. <laughs> and uh, they teach content that is prepared by governments. She was in a category of her own. We say in education psychology, uh, affective domain, where you affect people and you change people. It's values. In fact, the values we are talking about in this country, inculcating values in citizenship. Even in the BBI, one of the issues is addressing values. I think sometimes we search for things that we refuse to practice to have the courage to drive them. And I think Helen did it. And it will live on forever. And uh, today we are speaking to the family. Wilson, we are with you. Be courageous and have conviction like she did. The children, the same thing. And I'm sure we'll even have one of you do the ministry and take up the ministry of Helen in due course. If not among these children, there will be grandchildren. And uh, we will the, the most aggressive thing that we can ever do, and the honor we can do to one who has departed, is to leave and secure her legacy. Legacy of music, legacy of firm Christian values. Of course, we always say behind a successful man, there is always a strong, strong woman. I know Wilson has somebody who's very strong and has done so much and I think even when she resigned from energy other things that are not written she has raised a very strong family with so many other issues which we don't need to talk about of course great success so uh, Wilson and the children we wish you well we pray for you there's a reason for everything there is a time for everyone it is time for Ellen to go and it is time for you to live a life of courage, conviction, and stand with God as you've always done, and everything else will fall in place. With all that, we wish you well. God bless you. I want your soul rest in eternal peace. Thank you.
particular moment because he's Jehovah Jireh, the provider, who has provided us with peace, he has provided us with grace, and he has enabled us even to be here at this particular moment. I want to thank God sincerely because of what he's done. For us to be here is just the grace of God. We can afford a smile, we have cried, we have grieved, we are still mourning. But I want to say our God who is in heaven has given us the grace to stand it all. Praise be to God. I'm saved. I love the Lord. And I want to bring my condolence on behalf of my siblings, on behalf of my family, the Shelley's family, on behalf of Tumu's family, and on behalf of all our relatives, I want to say we are here to say, Helen, rest in the hands of the Lord. Helen has fought a good fight, and I want to say that the Lord has been faithful. As many people have said, Helen was our sister, who was actually a vibrant person who has connected all of us in our family, and she has impacted a lot of values to all of us. We are today strong because of Helen, what, what Helen has done to us. That is, we mourn her. We mourn her going. We are saying that what Helen has put in us, it will live forever. And that is why I'm saying today, God has been gracious. That is why we are able to stand. And may God really help you and help us together. I want to say I shared the last moment with Helen. In fact, I saw her go. But Helen has given us hope. It is us to work out our salvation now so that we may see her in the beauty kingdom of God. Helen, we loved you. As many people have said, as Helen has been coming to comment, she would always tell me I'm from a service. I am from this. Please prepare a gully for five people or even ten people. She would tell me, and I will do it. Those are the servants of God. And she would tell me, I have a team, just prepare. The last moment when Ellen was in Bombay doing some good work, she was finishing her, 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 her songs. She was telling me, I want to beat the deadline. I didn't know what the deadline was. And she would tell me, just as she was just been saying, what, how much money do you have? Just go and buy sugar. We are visiting five families. I would tell her, I'm committed to so what she was saying, cancel that plan. We are going. It is a must. And we would visit. These last days when she was in moment and she finally came to Nairobi, we were with her in moment. Thank you so much. Thank you, the church, the church which has stood with us. Thank you, friends. You stood with us. You prayed with us. You prayed with our family. You prayed with the fam family of Shemeji. And you've been with us all this time when we required you. As my Shemeji has said, I remember when Helen, I think when well, Helen was going, I saw her and I cried in the hospital when the doctor, when the, 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 the doctor told me there that this is when we have to leave it to the Lord. I called Reverend. I told Reverend, come back. And don't forget to come with Bishop, because I knew. Let me see if there are any people from KRA. Um, any members from the project? Those who are involved in the project, I think uh, most of them are Santi Sana. Um, any congregation from Sita, where Sheila is working? Anyone who has come? 
to yes, as a journey's son. Thank you so much for them. Uh, any reps from the schools um, for uh, Shalom and uh, Stephanie? Um, those who have come from the schools, are they yes, they are here as a journey's son. And anyone who has also come uh, from the school where he is, um, those who I think they have said their reps which should be coming um, for the funeral. Asanteni sana na mungu awabariki. So um, uh, this time I uh, will allow uh, Mr. Kolige to come and share with us briefly and also invite the children so that we can hear from them. Thank you sana Mr. Kolige. Makofi kwa Kolige, let's give him that support and that's right. I'm going to go to the summit. I'm young. I do recognize that there are many people uh, from the group uh, spectrum uh, who have come to condone with us. And we, we want to, to take a moment to appreciate all of you. Uh, you will know that most of our speeches are actually uh, a word of thank you. Uh, and it is because uh, you have given us your time, you have given us your love, you have shown us uh, so much love. And, and we just want to say uh, the Lord bless you. Uh, the, there are many things that have been said here about uh, my, my wife Helen, uh, the mother of our, of our children who are here. And, and uh, there, there are not a lot of good things. and, and those good things you hear out there, they, they begin at home. So, the, we are the first beneficiaries. So, even, even, even as we go, I just want to say, uh, she has been an amazing person, uh, um, an amazing uh, uh, mother to the children, and wife to, to me, and, you know, uh, she passed her to us. You may not know that. But she was our pastor. First, before she was a pastor out there. She was our evangelist first, before she evangelized out there. They are here. Maybe I can introduce them. Look at these beautiful girls here. Um, yeah, and they are just this young, and I ask that all of you, uh, the mothers, don't be far away from us. We, we need you. Because look, they are in their prime age. Uh, some of them are considered in moving on soon. <laughs> and uh, I have given them my blessings. And I know the mother has given them their blessings. So, really, let's just say it's a celebration. Uh, that we are here today. And by the way, uh, just for information, today being 15th of January uh, 2021, uh, it's our anniversary. We got married in uh, 15 January 1993. Uh, and we've been running strong. So, if we focus too much on the last three months, we lose out of the benefits of the 27th and, and, and in six years, seven months, right? So I am, um, and by then I'm so strong today because of the pastors and you know, Reverend, all the reverends who are here, uh, the bishop. Uh, thank you so much, and, and thank you for each and every one of you. You have visited our home. You have done so much for us. Sorry, I'm supposed to be introducing my children. <laughs> Look at them, they say they were coming to celebrate their mom. They will not wear black. And, and <laughs> so I want to introduce them. So here, you've been here a lot. Uh, Sheila, Stephanie, Shalom, and Gideon. In that order.
to Jamie and singing a song that God has been putting in my heart um, from the time that mom left us. Next week, 
Uh -huh. So, you know, we used to look forward to it. At first, it was a bit hard because it was like, huh, can you do church with the five people who you know in the house? <laughs> and then later on, it was so much fun. We used to see in church till 3 p.m. from 11. So, and then 4 o'clock, we start cooking Ugali. The church now goes to the, to the kitchen. And then, <laughs> and then we're like, okay, guest speaker, come cook. Aunt, a lot of things 
she's sitting there, uh, was there. So I remember looking at her, and you know that time, um, my, okay, you know, we, it's spiritual growth, it's moving from point A to point B to point C, yeah? So I remember looking at her, and she was so pretty, she had this beautiful blue dress on with a brown jacket, and I thought, oh my gosh, when I wear clothes, I want to look beautiful like her. Probably it was the glory of God, thinking about it now. Yeah, but she was so pretty. I was like, God, please help me to start dressing like my mom. She's so pretty. She looks like she's, I don't know, floating on air when she's preaching or something like that. Um, well, I said so much. These people need to talk. I'm going to give you time. Don't worry. <laughs> so, yes. Um, my mom was exhausted most of the time exhausted like i don't know you know she the way reverend Ray has said to be spent to spend and be spent that was her she was exhausted most of the time because she was out preaching the gospel literally i wonder why we never got her a driver because no? <laughs> she she used to if dad wasn't there she used to drive a lot like she drives herself there she preaches the gospel, she gets tired, she drives back. So she was so exhausted because she used to give out so much. If she had 100% today, she would give out 100%. Come home, rest, pray, ask God for more energy, go out again, give another 100%. So she was just tired most of the time. She used to sleep in, and you know, you tell her, okay, rest this weekend, stay home. So, you know, we had gotten used to her being away, which was fine, because the word of God needs to go and needs to be spread. Um, the first week that she went on a serious mission, uh, I don't remember which year it was, but I think they were with Josephine, Josephine Langat, the one who spoke, and some other people. She had just now started uh, going on long trips. So she was going for a whole week. Oh my goodness, we cried. We cried in the car when we were saying bye because we were like, where are you going? Mom, what are you going to do for a whole week without seeing you? And then, of course, after that, we forgot about it and God just gave us the grace to just be releasing her and letting her go and letting her just be out there, you know, taking the whole gospel to the whole world. So, yeah, that's mom for you. Um, I'm really going to miss her. Uh, I really, I'm really going to, as in, yeah, I'm going to miss her. She's, yeah, I'm gonna miss her a lot. Uh, but, you know, I really thank God for my family because um, we have so much love together. And I really thank God for all of you because uh, your love and your support and your prayers and everything has been so overwhelming and I'm really grateful because I know that we are not alone and you're going to be with us and God is with us and everything is going to be okay. So I'm really grateful. You know, people have been flooding the house and, you know, hugging us and just being there for us. The way that said, most of our speeches are just thank you, thank you, thank you. So. Let me just add to that and say thank you so much. Thank you so much. God bless all of you for being there for us. Thank you for you know even planning to come after all this is over. Thank you for coming. Thank you for praying. Thank you for everything. God bless you so very much. I'm grateful to God because I'm standing in front of people and I have not cried yet. This is a miracle. God is good. God is good. Is real. Is the Bible says, "Blessed be the God of all comfort, who comforts us." Yeah, He's the God of all comfort. You know, each of you have some comfort, and you're bringing it to us. But God is the God of all comfort, so He's bringing all comfort to us, and I'm so happy. I'm so grateful. But I'm so happy. I think the next person can come and share. <laughs> Thank you so much. My name is Shima. God bless.
then I drive her places, and she had this, this all. She, everything, everything would just, she had everything. There was just beauty in everything. She was just excited for the day when she would get up. When you wake up, you know, sometimes you're like, Ugh. another day, you have to, you know, start moving and grinding. But mom was always so excited. She would play very loud music on the TV, and then tell you, my job, Melala Sana, it's time to make room, I'm sick, and I'm to Sana. Tell you to move out of the bedroom and come to the living room. She would play loud music. She would be singing herself. I had she used to love she used to love singing in the sitting room. And then she'd record and listen. And then like all the you know we had a big preview of all the unreleased music, all the unreleased albums, all the all the quotes in the books. So she would sing all these lovely songs and be like, Hey mom, you need Bogani name Zuri. And she's like, yeah. Because now she's writing a new song. And yeah, I'm going to miss her. I love her so much. Right. And I'm happy because she is blessed with you. Thank you. Praise God. Praise God again. Thank the Lord for giving me this opportunity to speak. Mom has been the best. Please be by my side forever. Through hard times. Thank you. Uh, I thought it would be unfair if they, they sat down before you hear his, uh, his deep voice. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that was. Uh, Mom loved all the children equally, and the, of course Didi had a special place, being the last born and, uh, and the youngest of them all, so, yeah. Everything is going to be alright, Didi, uh, so don't you worry, uh, the Lord is with us as family. So, uh, I just want to say thank you very much once again uh, for all of you. The, the people, even the media, the media stations, they want a lot actually to publicize and, and even social media, they publicized and, uh, and I think as a result of that we got to know uh, that there are very many people who are praying for us uh, around the globe. Uh, I received so many calls from America, from, from uh, Australia, from UK. Uh, and of course from Kenya, I mean, most of them are the people who are attacked by uh, uh, Helen uh, while she was here. And uh, that energy that she had, she spread it around the world. And we thank God for, for that because wherever she went, uh, you know Helen has an interesting uh, trait where uh, it's not only the crowd, but she pretty the individual. And it's not only the individual. The individual doesn't have to be of any age. She bring to a child, because I know she was mentoring some youth, some children, and she will bring to others. She will bring to she will bring to people who are down, uh, maybe the ladder of the society. But at the same time, pray to the ones at the top. So, and pray for them. She was just a wonderful person. So, we miss her, we love her very much. But here she is. Uh, they loved her more. I mean, the Lord loved her more. And, you know, the, when, whenever I sit back and listen and, and see, I see that uh, she was executing everything she did with a sense of agency. There was nothing that was thought to be done that would take a week. If it hasn't been done now, it will be done now. And it doesn't matter whether it's, uh, it's going to burn her fingers or not, it has to be done. And, and, and it's a wonderful thing, she did it. 
So, uh, like, like you're hearing about, maybe she would come and say, these things have to be changed, these curtains have to be changed, and, and the following day, you find a new sense of cutting, or you, this painting has to be changed. <laughs> By evening, you find, uh, of course, some of us, okay, me, I may have to be reminded that there has been a change in color in the house. <laughs> you can see this is now red. Who's in it? This other Oh, yeah, actually. But yeah, you know, uh, it is the distinct role that everyone has in a, in a family. The man has this sort of responsibilities, and the lady has that set of responsibilities. And sometimes, uh, you know, the, what we do is, is we do what we call, is it called subset. When you draw one circle here and another circle here, you see what is coming in between there, right? And, and therefore, the urge is that you need to move everything from here into that uh, circle, and then from this other side, you move it inside that, so that there is only one circle, right? But a lot of times, I think by the very nature of our, our people, uh, they, I mean the people, how people have been made, we are different. So, you know, uh, I know that, that there are people who may be listening to me on, on this uh, various sessions or even on social media. I'm a chairman who may be seen. You know, to go to the world age, you can eat your own way, and you know, I'm going to go to the world Helen, King Gomi, Amun Dama and Ope, Otomo Mele, Amun Helen, Comitan, Amun and D. The Kelet, you talk of doing it, took on my mini job, the engine of doing it, come on me of doing it. So, came up on way and be checking with a watching and support, he can give a way stool, he can give a go to me media, go to meet and Amun and Eta for some of what station is a horror. As you are not big, or not big, or one of the other two. And maybe two or two of the one in June, or two good women who are signed at Tungu Lillian, or Mune, Kitini, Javas, and I gave me the studio. Oh, my God, 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 uh, so, ki <laughs> Mamma, I For who? Everybody. She was praying. That day she was praying, even singing. 
and traffic and others. You know, sometimes you think, Sasa, we will be like a vacation to land and back. But who vacation? Ni kweli ya naenda nyumbani, na kenzi ya hiyo nyumbani unasema. Ni nyumbani kule kwa mungu. So, puki ya inende kwa isi yetu mwa mwana, ya nifanya kazi ya mungu, baka siku ya mwishu. Na alikuwa napenda wafanya, wakuatumishu wa mungu sana, alikuwa naombea sana. Anaombea sana, anaombea pasa jetu. Nasema, hile Reverend Raymond, nasema, he was there for eight years. Alikuwa naende, anaombea Reverend Raymond. Sasa mila wengisikia pa sacha ya mdi uyu sasa amikuwa Ameshikilia hile kazi ya Reverend Ray Ano mwambe Nasema tumube Keshike akwe Holiness and righteousness Nataka adwe yu Na ubiru So that God gives him the grace To her daughter For those who may not know She discussed with me a lot of time And she would say You know pastor's wives Imagine when a pastor wakes up and then I will be in Sasa I watch a baby in my Sasa, you know your challenge, no? So she would say, I want to collect all the pastor's wives We need to now begin and manage each other with them And she would do that And not only that, she would do it even with her own material things In the little way that she was blessed So we are discussing, or we are morning, celebrating a very, uh, uh, what do I call it? God-loving person. I want to pen our You see, if you have God's love, you, have, you love you, isn't it? So she loved all of us. She loved us as a family. She loved her sisters. She loves her parents. She loved, I know that because I was with her. And she would tell me, Mama Jones at the time, Sister, Sister Angu, I said, I'm me. I said, I said, and she would tell me, wait, we need to do something. So we'll do it. Hey, I'm, I'm uh, overrunning my time, please. Uh, what am I saying? I'm here celebrating someone who uh, uh, I love very much. And I thank you all for uh, showing uh, your love by being present here today. I know there are others who are watching us on, uh, on Facebook, uh, maybe even on YouTube and other channels or even TV stations. Be blessed very much because I know there are those who are watching across the world. Be very blessed. Know that God is with you and we have received your blessings also. We have received your prayers. Your prayers is what is making us to stand here today. Otherwise, we will be at home somewhere crying and calling ourselves in a corner. But thank you for everyone. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Sorry, uh, I'm reminded that uh, Kumbe, I was thinking the family. Uh, so, every member of the family, may you please come so that we see family. You see my name? And you Ah, good. Good. I'll be there for coffee. Thank you very, very much. Over here we have sisters, we have cousins, we have uh, uncles, we have everyone across the spectrum, even the children. Uh, where are, where are the, uh, those ones who are from my side of the family? Kibamui, Did you have a coffee? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Uh, We just want to thank God for such an amazing, amazing strength that the Lord has given to this family and all of us. Amen. So I want us to, uh, we are almost at the tail end of everything and we'll invite Reverend Ray to pray for the family as they travel and then as you travel and even as you continue to pray for the family of Colligan, uh, we uh, trust that the Lord will be with us. Uh, my name is Pastor Jeff Jeruyot. I'm the pastor at Karen AGC. May the Lord bless you. Very good every day. Those who are traveling with Johnny Masses along my road. But um, yeah, there is a scripture I, I quoted early and I wanted, us to, I wanted to share with you even as we end. It is 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 15. It says, I will very gladly spend 
and be spent for you. Though the more I abundantly I love you, the less I be loved. Helen spent and she was spent because she loved us. So men, let me ask the family that are here today and those who have been traveling to Olegumani today to stand so that we can pray for you for eternal masses. And we pray for the family and the friends as they escort the body back home. Lord, you have promised us that you will send your angels to stand guard and watch over us. Yes. And we pray that when as they try, may that blessing that you have bestowed upon this entrance also reach those who are traveling, that there will be no accidents along the road, there will be no jam, there will be no delay. That Lord, the travel, they will, they will travel smoothly all the way to the board. And we pray, my Father, that as the drivers drive, may you hold them, may you grant them wisdom, even as they make the decision. We commit this to right. Lead the family, the friends, and all the relatives that are joining them. Protect them in the name of Jesus Christ. We also pray for the service this evening at home and tomorrow. Lord, may your presence fill us. May you lead us. Fill us with your anointing. Lord, may we experience your presence in everything. Let the Holy Spirit lead us even in this season and in this time. Lord, as we end our service today, for the words that we have said, the message that came to us, and now with the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy follow you for the days of your life.
Baba wetu mwenye mamlaka mwenye uwezo katika bingu na nje Asama Mungu tuko mbele zako wakati huu tunakushukuru Bwana kwa sababu umetenda hata kutoka Nairobi baka hapa Mwenyezi Mungu tunasema wewe ni Bwana mwokozi wetu katika china la Yesu Kristo tuko hapa Mungu kwa ajili ya wepo wako kwa ajili ya neema na nguvu zako baba wetu uweze kuturumia uturehemu na utupe nguvu uweze ukatawale ukasimama Mungu katika safari hii ya mwisho ya mtumishi wako hapa tunaomba Mungu uweze ukasimame pamoja nasi fariji bamhamilia wape nguvu na e nguvu zako pray believing and trusting in Jesus only name i pray amen Baba wetu wa binguni katika jina la Yesu Kristo. Baba tunakushukuru tunalimidi jina lako. Wastahili sifa na utukufu siku ya leo. Wewe ni Mungu na hatuna mwingine alinganishwe na wewe. Asante Mungu kwa sababu uko nasi na utasimama pamoja nasi hata katika ratiba ya siku hii Mungu uweze kuonekana na sifa ziweze kurudi kwako. Asante kwa kusaidia familia. Asante kwa fariki wa fariji. Asante kwa kuwapa nguvu. Asante kwa kushindania. Mungu unasimama pamoja nao hata siku hii. Nasema ni asante kwa sababu Mungu umeonekana kwa kila jambo. Sifa na utukufu ni kwako. Endele ya kuwa nasi tunapoanza tunapotamatisha baba tutakushukuru na tunakupa sifa imaomba hayo yote nikiamini umetutendea na ni katika jina la Yesu Kristo naomba na kuamini ambao ambao wamefika hapa hasa wale wametoka safari ndefu kutoka Nairobi na wamefika hapa kwa usalama hapa ni nyumbani kwa kolegei hapa ni nyumbani kwao na na nyumbani yetu vile vile eh sisi ni eh jamaa ya familia ya Kokle tumekuwa hapa tangu eh, mambo hii ilitokea na tumekuwa tukiongoleza hapa na wa majirani zetu kwa hivyo wao wabalesaji wametoka Nairobi pamoja na familia yetu ambayo walikuwa kule Nairobi tunasema karibu nyumbani tutaendelea mpaka hii kipindi yote itakuwa kwa imefisha kwa hivyo sina mengi nasema tu karibu nyumbani umekuja eh, hapa na tunasema asante Mungu amefanya mzuri na ametutendea mema. Kwa hivyo karibu karibuni. Na sasa ni Mungu amefanya mzuri na umekuja kwa usalama. Na nafikiri yangu itawacha hapo. Jehovah, I never, 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 never